In Chapter 12, we're going to discuss uh, food challenges and agricultural practices. And this year, the Nobel Peace Prize goes to the World Food Program. I remember last year, uh, does the Nobel Prize go to three scientists? Um, they're studying economics and they are fighting the poverty. So you can see the poverty and the hunger are two big issues uh, in this world. And I want you to be able to identify environmental compacts with modern agriculture. Mainly, we focus on discussion of the chemicals like fertilizers and the pesticides. And I want you to be able to explain how organic and sustainable agricultural practices differ from conventional agriculture and why we are doing this. And the last, I want to talk about our individual food choices. From my perspective, I definitely want you to understand we do not have to use, overuse the chemicals like fertilizers and the pesticides. They give us a lot of problem and they do not necessarily enhance the crop yields. And please understand bioaccumulation and the biomagnification. It's a little bit hard to comprehend without practice. So I have a discussion topic for you to practice so we understand what is bio magnification better. The second message I have for you is to make smarter food choice. Just to eat more veggies than the fruits. It has many benefits for you and for the environment. The last thing I want to call your attention to is the food waste. One third of the food we produce in this world never reach the table of dining. And that is really sad. And we will see what's the reason for that we, and what, what we can do about it. This guy, um, Mr. Ron Finley, he established the urban gardens. I want you to read the open story of the chapter. And he has a lot of courage to do that. He utilized the strips along the roads and uh, some of the uh, land spaces we even do not imagine we can use to grow those vegetables. And he realized the low income community do not have enough healthy food choices. And I want you to think about why he grow vegetables and not to have a few more chicken or pigs or cattle. <laughs> and this is very uh, profound if you think about our diets. A um, long time ago, the hunter-gatherers, they just moved from uh, place to place in small groups to gather food. At that time, the world population is about 10 million, and it's very low, and that population was maintained for a long time. And today, the advancement of technology enable us to feed one person just using 0.2 hectares compared to 100 hectares a long time ago. And look at how big the kernel, the, the cob is. This is the ancient old corn, and this is the modern corn. This is the same coin, okay? So this is almost like threefold bigger, uh, the modern corn compared to the original corn species. I know we humans are very smart. We domesticated crops and the animals. And we had a wisdom to the agriculture a long time ago. We're talking about thousands of years ago. We realized the importance of irrigation. The people built channels uh, for the irrigation in Egypt. We know the importance of organic matter. So we raise the crops and the animals together. So the animal provide manure for the crops. And people also, Native Americans, they know how important the soil properties are. So they add more organic matter to the soil. This is a modern agriculture. We use tens of chemicals. For example, the pesticides shown here. 
and this is what machines can do for us, right? So you can see all the field is like one kind of crop, and there's no biodiversity, and that invite the pest problems. And these are how massive the irrigation systems are. It completely change our landscape. And the machines can increase the efficiency of the labor more than tenfold. But we have to realize the pesticides and the fertilizer, they came with a high price. Okay, it takes five metric tons of fossil fuel to produce one metric ton of fertilizer. So they use a lot of energy. They use a lot of fossil fuel. That's a problem. This is projected increase of the fertilizer use compared to some regions of the world and a long time ago, like 70 years ago, you can see how much more fertilizer we use currently. Okay, this is the developing countries. They still, um, the use of the fertilizer is still growing. And developed countries, that's good because it looks like saturated. But over, uh, overall, the world application is increasing. The problem is the chemicals. The chemical fertilizers do not replace soil organic matter. They are sort of like fake nutrition. They do not stay. And they are not as rich as the soil organic matters um, produced by the nature in long many years. Remember, it takes 500 years to generate one inch of topsoil. And those chemicals drastically change the properties of the soil. And they affect the physical properties that the aeration and filtration rate and they change the chemical properties of the soil and the biological property. The biological rate we, we refers to the organisms living in the soil. And the problem, the challenges with the monoculture is the soil erosion. The bare soil erodes 100 times more. And the irrigation increases the soil erosion too. If you apply more water than the soil can take, it will wash the soil away, and it causes a leaching problem, right? It makes those uh, salts um, oozing out of the soil and cause a salinization problem. We lose a lot of crop species, and little genetic differentiation leads to increased pesticide use and fertilizer use. It's a vicious cycle, you can see here. And also use uh, the fossil fuel energy cause the global warming and the climate change. This is how much biodiversity of the crops we lost through 100 years. We used to have 500 kinds of lettuce and today is 40. 300 kinds of corn today is 20. We almost lost like 90% of the biodiversity of the crop species. And that reduced the resilience of the ecosystems, right? We learn when we when we lose the biodiversity, the ecosystem is more vulnerable and less re resilient. And it caused the soil loss and the degradation and the leaching means a uh, remove of the salts from the from the soil by water. And also the fertilizer decrease the pH of the soil and degrade its natural um, organic matter while stimulating microbial decay process. So the microbes becomes overall overly active and makes the soil acidic and the acidic soil is not that fertile. And if we keep doing this, if the, the soil keep being eroded, eventually we have a desert, which is really sad. And the other problems of the modern agriculture is contaminate our water. 
um, only half fertilizer got used by crops and the, the rest of it ended in the air and in the water and it caused eutrophication, right? It, it caused the uh, depletion of the oxygen in the water. And also, it, we take so much water for irrigation in agriculture. We overdraft the aquifers. So, cause the land substance, uh, subsidence. Once the land collapsed, the space for generating groundwater was gone. And uh, it's hard to imagine how those aquifers will be regenerated again. So they consider non-renewable resources. So that's the first part of my lecture.